the prodigal son story is not powerful to me because the father accepted the prodigal son. What humbles me about the prodigal son story is that the father threw a feast for the prodigal son. The gospel is not that you will get accepted back in the house. The gospel is not that God will forgive me of my sins. The gospel is that God throws a feast over me. You see in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, you were reading that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace. Being justified, not forgiven. And you see in verse 27, where then is boasting? Romans 3, verse 27. Where then is pride? Where, how is it possible for a Christian to be proud? Impossible. Why? Because it's not that a Christian got forgiven of his sins. That is why I still have pride. That is why it's so easy for me to be proud. Because I've completely misunderstood the gospel. We think about all the songs that we sing. We think about all the truths that we hear. We keep thinking about forgiveness. But that's not the gospel, dear brothers and sisters. That's not what Paul got stoned for. Paul was saying, for all the sin and fall short of the glory of God, being justified. And that word justified is being called righteous. It's not just about forgiveness. I want to show you a couple of other verses as it relates to being justified or being righteous. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. Jesus says, I want to tell you a story. But here's the reason I want to tell you the story. Because there are some people, and see what it says in verse 9, who trust in themselves that they are righteous. Okay? So Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm seeing a problem with the crowd here. There are people here who think that they are righteous. And then he goes on to tell the story. And there are two people. One person who is extremely righteous, actually. If you look at what the Pharisee is doing, he's extremely righteous in many ways. And then you get another person who's a pathetic sinner. If you look at it from a human standpoint, you get a man who's very righteous in many ways. Not perfectly righteous, but very righteous. And you get another man who's a sinner. Remember what Jesus was saying? I want to warn you against people because they think they can be righteous. And so he tells this whole story, which we know. Where the Pharisees praying, Lord, I thank you. I'm not like these other people because look at all that I'm doing. I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm tithing, all these things. And the tax collector is like, uh, all I can tell is all I'm doing, I've been stealing money from all these people, my countrymen. Everybody hates me. I'm serving the Romans. I'm not a very good Jew. But he's beating his best, saying, God be merciful. Now see verse 14. The gospel, dear brothers and sisters, is not Luke chapter 18, verse 13. Luke chapter 18, verse 13 is like Romans 3, 23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's no gospel there. The gospel is Luke 18, verse 14. What does Luke 18, verse 14 says? I tell you, this man went to his house justified, righteous, not forgiven. The Pharisee who was very righteous looking on the outside, didn't go home righteous because he had to compare himself with the righteousness of God. But this tax collector who had no reason to be called righteous, this is the gospel, dear brothers and sisters. The gospel is this man went home justified. I want to ask you, how many times have we gone home justified? Not forgiven. Justified. And read what he says there. Read what Jesus says. Dear brothers and sisters, this is the words of Jesus. You read it in your Bible in the simple English is there. And just ask yourself, is this true in my life too? See what he says in Luke chapter 18 verse 14. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. Okay, I understand that. 
because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But here's the thing. Here's the mark of somebody who humbles himself. He who humbles himself will be exalted. Have we seen that as the mark of humility? The result of humility, the result of true humility is God exalts me. How did that happen? How, how does that look like? Think about the prodigal son. Prodigal son got exalted to have a feast with the father. But I'll tell you one thing that I know about if you went to the scene in the prodigal son's house, after the prodigal son returned, you know what you would see? You would see a huge celebration. And if you go inside the house, you'd find a huge celebration. Like, what are you celebrating about? Who's the, who's the big shot? Who's the person who we're all celebrating about? They will be like that guy over there sitting over there. Who's that guy? Who's the guy? guy? Be like, Who's that? That's the son. That's the prodigal son. He's the reason why we're celebrating. So you go up to, you all go up to the prodigal son and say, hey, hey, you're the big shot, right? He's like, no, I'm not the big shot. Hey, no, 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 the whole party's about you. Yeah, I know. The whole party's about me. I'm not the big shot, though. I'm not the big shot. My dad's the big shot. You know that guy dancing and having such a good time because his son has come home. The guy's having such a great time. He's the happiest person in the room. So we go to the party in the prodigal son story and he's the one, he's the big shot. But he doesn't have any pride. Even though the whole feast is about him. Pride is excluded. 